Dr. David Gam on stem cell therapy. Understanding and treating blindness diseases using stem cells. Ultimately, when you're looking at using stem cell technology to help a patient with retinitis pigmentosa, there's a couple of ways at least that you can do it, more than two, but the two that we concentrate on are uh, transplantation approaches, um, as well as modeling diseases, so making a model of a disease in a dish, which we then can use to understand the mechanism of that disease, what, again, causes that disease to tick. And if we understand the, the sequences of deterioration that are involved, we can more precisely determine what drugs or gene-based therapies might be um, successful in uh, ameliorating that disease. So one approach requires transplantation. So that's, um, there's a lot of things that are involved in that with regard to the, uh, the FDA and making sure that we're making cell types that we, that we, uh, that we want to make. We can make them in, at a sufficient purity uh, and an amount, deciding how best to deliver that to the retina, just, um, determining how best to hook them back up into the deteriorating retina to get them to function again. And a lot of that work um, has, has been done uh, to some degree in the eye, and, and, and much more so than in other parts of the body. So, and there's glimpses of hope um, in those early transplantation uh, studies that suggest that it can be done. Um, so that's encouraging. Uh, there's still a, lot of, still a lot of work that needs to be done, obviously, to, to optimize that, um, that potential for stem cells to uh, replace cells that have died in the retina and restore vision. But the other aspect of stem cell uh, App-based applications for patients with RP is in that disease modeling where you're just doing it in a dish. So in those cases, you can take skin or blood samples from a patient with retinitis pigmentosa and then turn those cells into a type of, of adult stem cell, sort of reverse engineer those cells into an, uh, a stem cell and then forward engineer them back into a retinal cell. So in a, sort of like taking a biopsy of a patient. So somebody comes in with retinitis pigmentosa and you're able to, with just a small um, part of their skin or, or blood sample like they might submit for a, a cholesterol test, produce stem cells and then study their particular retinal cells in a dish and then find out what's going on in those cells that makes them ultimately deteriorate or become dysfunctional because we know a lot about the genes that cause uh, retinitis pigmentosa and other degenerative diseases of the retina. But we know surprisingly little about the biology, the actual, you know, what's going on in that, with that gene. If that gene becomes defective, why does that ultimately lead uh, that cell within the retina to become poorly functioning or, and ultimately die. So if we can figure that out, then we can target drug therapies or gene therapies in multiple different uh, areas of the cell, not just the gene itself, perhaps, uh, in order to help the patients uh, ultimately see better. It's also, I think, important to note that you know, this all started just a short while ago. I mean, embryonic stem cells, which are a potential source of, of retinal cells for replacing cells that have lo been lost or have died in the retina, uh, that came on board in 1998, and adult stem cells from skin or blood, so-called induced pluripotent stem cells, uh, were first described in 2007. So we're talking an amazing amount of progress in a, um, less than around five years or a little over 10 years, where you have literally the discovery of an entire field of science and medicine, uh, and now you have people um, actually performing phase one clinical trials or safety trials with them. That's um, remarkable. If you could look at the evolution of, of retinitis pigmentosa, for, which from the very beginning, the Foundation Fighting Blindness has been involved in, it was first, you know, we have this pattern of degeneration. Your retina is dying. Okay, that was the, the beginning of it. And see you later, we don't really need to see you anymore. Then it was, okay, now let's get an idea of what's causing your, your retina to, to deteriorate. What are the genes that are involved? And so the Foundation of Fighting Blindness put a lot of effort into being able to put their finger on exactly what was causing this disease, which oftentimes looks the same, but in reality is caused by many, many different types of gene defects. And that's the first step in knowing how to treat a disease, is to know what makes it tick. And so it, start, it started at the ground floor and said, we need to find out what these genes are. And it continues to do that. And it went from just a handful of genes to now over, you know, hundreds of genes that are involved in this disease. And each one of them has people within the foundation fighting blindness that are interested and that are moving forward uh, with uh, uh, understanding and ultimately treating those diseases. And so it's a tall order. I mean, it's not as though we're dealing with one disease where we have thousands of people working on a single disease. We have a lot of different diseases which have commonalities uh, between them, which we're trying to understand and then attra attacking them with a lot of very talented uh, researchers uh, and clinicians.